Good evening. It's such a blessing to be able to be with you during this time, and thank you so much for the opportunity to spend this time with you. I pray and I hope in your life and, in, and at home everything is well, that you've been enjoying the blessings of the Lord and understanding that in everything we got to be thankful, in everything we got to give thanks, and to know and to, and to understand and also to experience that God is good, God is faithful in all his ways. Tonight we're going to be looking at our second session of Conquering Anxiety. And I use the word conquering because it's really, this is really a battle. It's really a battle that millions of people face each and every day, but there is hope. There is hope and there is victory. And even though it's hard work, and even though it require, it require one's dependency solely, solely in, 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 in the Lord Jesus and in his word. We're gonna be going through some examples in the Bible of people that suffer and went through difficult times, um, times that really was um, challenging and trying times in their in their heart and in their soul and how they conquer it. But before we do anything else, we first we're gonna do is to worship the Lord. So I ask you to prepare yourself, prepare, prepare, prepare your heart and take time now to be able to worship him and sing along as we go um, and sing this hymn, this spiritual song, in order to worship the Lord. Join us in song, is the word please. Let's sing. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a forte of glory divine heir of salvation purchase of God born of his spirit washed in his blood this is my story this is my song my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long.
Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, for giving us this day. We thank you so much because you're good to us, and we thank you so much, Father God, because we know that you are in control of all things. Your mercies and your sovereignty, we can see all over, and we thank you for your goodness and your long suffering. Be with us now as we go into this hour, into looking into your word, encourage us and help us to be strong in you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. It is very important for, for, for us as we see what's going on around our country, and not only around our country, but let's start here, that we take up prayer as a priority in our life. We do need to be praying for our country. We, need, we do need to be praying for our leaders. We do need to be praying for those who are on the front lines fighting this, this virus. We do need to be praying for the unrest. We do need to be praying for peace. We got to be praying that the Prince of Peace, which is Jesus Christ, will, will reign in, in, in all hearts. Without Jesus, there will be no peace. There will never be, be, be peace because Jesus his peace and will God help us for us to be agents of his peace I I encourage you to really really take the time to be to be praying for all these things and also remember rem remember each one in prayer um, I mentioned last Sunday that is we will make a list of the people that we ought to be praying for um, you know, we will spend more than two or three minutes in prayer. If we will be to, if we will um, really consider the things we ought to be praying for, and and I, and I, and I cast this question. I remember last Sunday, who can we say can count on our prayers every day? Who can we say can count on our prayers er, every day? It is important for us to know that it, 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 the, the key for a successful, victorious, strong Christian life, a relationship with, with the Lord Jesus, uh, um, it is essential that prayer is got to be a priority in, in life. Prayer got to be a constant and prayer got to be a priority. So I want to encourage you encourage you to um, make a prayer list, uh, pray more, spend time, separate yourself for prayer. Be praying for church. We're going to be having communion this coming next, this coming Sunday. We're going to have co communion on uh, the first Sunday of the month, and God willing, we're going to be having it. Communion is a time of fellowship and also it's a time of remembrance. So hopefully you'll be there and everybody else um, will be there also. I remember that this coming Sunday, um, the English group is going to be on the, in the auditorium and the Spanish group is going to be in the basement, in, in the fellowship hall. We're going to be switching uh, first month um, the Spanish group were the, in the auditorium, um, the English were in the um, fe fe fellowship room. For the month of August, we're going to switch. And we're going to continue doing so until, you know, we have the green light to be able to 
um, go go back to normal, to what we we used to do. But communion, we're going to be serving it. We're going to have a tent in the parking lot, and all together as one church, we're going to be having com communion there in the parking lot. Let's um, have one more song, one more song for this evening, and again, let me invite you to sing with us. And after this song, we're gonna go straight to the to, to the Bible, straight to our to our second session of conquering anxiety, conquering anxiety. Um, join us in song and have your Bible ready when we go back uh, to the Bible to find answers for this difficult, difficult reality. Let's sing. If you have your Bible, please go to John chapter 10, the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John chapter 10, if you would please. And we're going to look at some verses because, again, in dealing with anxiety, one of the things we got to realize is this, that emotional distress and emotional pain have its, its roots in some in the in something that is spiritual and is very very important for us as we attack and fight um, these feelings not to become dependent, as we're going to see at a, um, soon, and what um, medicine can do or do for us, but to become more and more dependent in the Word of God, more and more dependent in what God says, more and more dependent in His promises, more and more dependent in the um, in the weapons of prayer and of his word that he has given us. So many times because we're humans, so many times because we're human, we want to depend on trust things that we can see, that have like immediate result, that things that are tangible to us. And that's understandable because of our flesh. We doubt, we fear, we have complaints, we, um, we sometimes even have a lot of uncertainty, uncertainty about things. But you see, that is where faith and the Spirit and the Word and prayer comes in. What I cannot see, I can see by, by faith. What I cannot see with these eyes, I can see by faith. What, what I cannot 
what what I doubt and what um, make me be uncertain uncertain about my future. I could find certainty. I could find I, I can be rooted. I can be established. I could have a firm foundation that will never move, and that is given by and solely by the word of God. So it is important for me not to just have, um, you know, a doctor's number or a prescription to go to the pharmacy to fill up every time I'm in pain to, to, have, to have a pill in my, in my hand, but it's important for me to have a verse in my hand, to have a scripture in, at, at hand to have a, a, a book and a chapter and a verse and to be able to trust what God has said in his word. It is important for me to have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that strengthens me, that teaches me, that comforts me, that gives me that security that nothing else, nothing else in this world or that man can give or do. It is so important. And that's why we go to the Word of God. That's why we believe and we trust the um, perfect, inerrant Word of God. And only by the help of the Holy Spirit can one trust His Word in such a way. Because as I said, in our flesh, we cannot. In our flesh, we cannot. John chapter 10, verse 10 and 11. Listen to what God's promise here. He says, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the cheap. What Jesus is promising here, that he have come to give us life. And the way he gave us life is that he started by giving his own life for us, his sheep. The, um, the thief only come to steal, only come to kill, and to destroy. How many people that suffer through anxiety are, are, are you know, Things are taken away from them that will never come by. Relationship with parents or with a husband or with, ch or with a child or, or with parents or with, or with others. Opportunities in life. And things that are taken away, things that are, are, are totally destroyed. And, you know, it's very sad when you look at it. And that's the reason I mentioned I want to mention again, when you look at the statistics, those statistics refer to people. It referred to human beings. It referred to souls. And we got to break your heart of how many people have been robbed and, you know, their lives have been destroyed because of this, which end up being lack of faith. A lack of faith. Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah, Old Testament, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 3. Jeremiah 31, verse 3, he says, The Lord had appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn Thee. With loving kindness, I have drawn thee. The Bible is telling us, and God is saying, He have loved you. Even though this this specifically applied to to what Je, to what Je, 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 Jeremiah was saying towards about himself and the people of of Israel, but also this application for us here too. God love you. God love you with that everlasting love. If nobody else you feel love you, God does. God does. And you know, when you have nothing left but God, you begin to understand that the only thing you really need in life is God. 
If you have the Lord, you have everything else. If you have the Lord, you are complete. If you have the Lord, he promised, all these other things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. The problem for us is that we want all these other things first. And, and, and that's our struggle. And that's our fight. And that's our, you know, dependency. We want all these other things first. We want the relationships. We want the marriage. We want the career. We want, we want the money. We want, we want the material. We want the car. We want the children. We want the acceptance. We want to be remembered. We want to be like. We want to be loved by others. We want all these other things first. And we forgot that your first follow and seek after God, and then God in turn will add all these things to your life that He might think you need, that, that He might say you, you, you need. What He's saying is that He has loved you with the everlasting love. Do you realize that no one can and will ever love you that the Lord, like the Lord Jesus loved you? No one will and can never have the type of mercy that God will have for you. The type of forgiveness that God will give you. No one else will do. No one else will have. Isaiah, book of Isaiah, chapter 43. Isaiah 43, verse 2. Isaiah 43, verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And to the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. What a promise. What a promise. What a promise. Sometimes, yes, we may feel like we're drowning. Sometimes, yes, because of our emotions, because of anxiety, you might feel like you're drowning. When you are in the Lord, when you understand the Lord, when you know Him, when you, when you receive Him, when you, when you receive His Word, He promised when you go through the waters, He not saying you're never going to go through waters. He said, this is one thing that we need to understand. This is one thing that we need, we need, we need to, to realize in our life. Believing the Lord Jesus, knowing the Lord Jesus, does not prevent bad things and anxiety to come to life. As we're going to see later, that there are examples in the Bible, good man of God, in fact, heroes of faith, they had to deal with anxiety themselves. So being a Christian or being a believer does not prevent Times of, an, 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 of anxiety in one's life does not prevent the fact that you're going to go through deep waters, does not prevent that you're going to go through the fire. But just like the Hebrew children in the times of Nebuchadnezzar, they were thrown into the fiery furnace. They got to go through the fire. But guess what? The Lord Jesus was there with them. The Lord Jesus was walking there with them. And the Lord Jesus protected them so they will not be born and burned. You might go through the deep waters. You might go through the fire. That what you feel, that what you sense, that what your spirit might feel. Felt, might feel like you're drowning, might feel like you're burning, but with the Lord Jesus, he'll protect you. He promised to be there. He will comfort you, or he, he will also give you the strength to go through it. In some cases, he might take it away, but that's not always is his will. But it is his will if you, if you let him to be there with you. If you acknowledge him to allow you to find victory, to conquer, to be able to stay afloat, to not be burned and be able to enjoy life, have abundance of life. How many people today lack abundance of life because of anxiety? How many people today can really enjoy daily living because of anxiety? Well, that's not the will of God for your life. That's not what God wants for you. 
He didn't die on the cross. He then went through that all that sacrifice for you to be be slave and to be and to be kept captive by anxiety. He went to the cross. He died and bled and rose again, obtaining victory for for you, not only for life everlasting, but also for this life, for this life that you live, for this life that we live. So you could be free. So you could be free to worship him, to you, that you will be free to, to, to serve him, that you will be free to live and don't be no and be no longer in any bondage at all, especially bondage of the flesh. Psalms, the book of Psalms, 30, 37. Psalm 37, 23. Psalm 37, 20, 20, 23 and 24. We read, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delight in his way. Though he fall, listen to this, Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upheld him with his hand. Amen. Amen. You see, there is possibility that a good man can fall. There is a possibility because we all humans that we can face um, and have moments in life of weakness and things that hit us hard, that make us stumble. But what's the promise of the Lord it says here in this psalm? The Lord say in this psalm that thou he fall, verse 24, thou he fall, he shall not utterly cast down, for the Lord upheld him with his hand. Don't you know that when you belong to Jesus, don't you know, little child, when you belong to, to, to Jesus, he is holding you with his hand? It's not the hand of your mother. It's not the hand of your father. It's not the hand of your son or a daughter. It's not, it's not the hand of a husband or a wife. It's not the hand of a good friend. It's not even the hand of a pastor. It's the hand of the almighty God that upheld thee. It's the hand of the almighty God that sustain you, that protect you, that when you fall, he pick you back up. You got to, we got to trust what God says about himself and his relationship with us is we really believe, is we really are believers, is we really trust his word. So many times what happened is that we trust um, the pill, right? We trust the pill more than we trust the word of God more than we trust what the Lord says, more than we trust the power of God's word to transform our life, to give us abundant on life, and to also conquer those areas of our life that need conquering. And anxiety, let me tell you, for many, that's one of them that need conquering. And the word of God have the weapons, the ammunition you need to be able to conquer it. Revelation chapter 21, like this verse. Revelation chapter 20, 21, verse four, give us this great hope. It give us this great hope. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither there shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. I think about the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul had something in his, in his, in his life that was a cause of anxiety, that was a struggle for him. And he mentioned in 2 Corinthians that he asked the Lord three times, three times to take it away. And God told him, my grace is sufficient for, for, the, for thee. You know, in this life, in this life that we live, or trust, and we move because of the grace of God. 
we trust the grace of God. There is absolutely nothing that can be compared to the, to the grace of God. Even going through deep waters, even going through fire, even going through these um, um, times and periods of anxiety, the Bible says, they're coming a day, listen to this, they're coming a day that your father, your heavenly father, that knows your pain, that knows what you go through each and every day, that understand it, but also have given you a way out, also have given you a way to conquer and a way to victory, but there coming a day that your God, your Father, will he himself will wipe your tears. He himself said there will be no more death, no more sorrow, he said you will not cry no more. You will not have to go through pain because the former things are passed away. There will be no more prescription to fulfill. And you know, for some of you, for some of you, you will just trust God and you will just trust his word and depend on his word. For some of you, that day could be right now. Right now. But God is saying that they're coming a day where there will be no more trips to the pharmacy. The former things are going to be passed away, are going to be gone, and he will make everything new. You may ask, Pastor, why you insist so much with the word of God? Why you insist and put so many verses? Why you insist in going back to the word of God, even in 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 this struggle that many feel like anxiety and 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 all the trouble that they mean why why go why so much why so much emphasis in the word of god does this really help you may ask well let me answer you this way why do i insist with the word of god and then i'm going to give you three examples you see as i mentioned be before i I do believe that many people, doctors, um, etc., are into this to be able to help people. They want to help people. And, you know, sometimes with not ill intentions, they overprescribe medicine to ease the pain that people are going through. I do understand, however, that there are many, many cases in which it's just business. Because let we got to be clear and we got to be straight. Um, giving out pills and giving out prescription is also a business for the companies. And one of the reasons people are kept on prescription for years without end is because it is a business. But okay. But a lot of these medication cause several side effects. It is interesting when you look at um, these co these commercials when they're promoting some new medication and they're promoting some new um, drug to help with anxiety or feelings of depression. Then they start giving you the list of the side effects. Some could be bl blurry vision, confusion, dizziness, drowsiness or fatigue, headaches, loss of memory or concentration, problems with balance, coordination, even problems with speech, or upset stomachs. Some will give nausea, nervousness, restlessness, um, drowsiness. Some will also give insomnia, weight gain, weight loss, headaches, and the list goes on. Several side effects but you know what will never give you a side effect you know what will never give you a side effect oh let me put it this way if it's gonna give you a side effect it's gonna be a transformative powerful good for you side effect you know what is it the word of god the word of god don't have any negative side effect. The only negative side effect that the Word of God has is for those that don't believe. 
the only negative effect that the word of God have is for the unbeliever. But for the believer, the word of God has no negative side effects. In the Bible, there were people that experienced anxiety. In the Bible, you know, although we probably look at these people as, um, you know, heroes of faith, there is um, places that you can see where people in the Bible suffer for periods, maybe not for long, peri long periods, but they did experience and know what anxiety or that struggle, that battle is all about. Psalm 69, the book of Psalms, if you would please, book of Psalms 69. Let me find it here. Book of Psalms, verse 69, chapter 69. Are we going to look at verse 29? David, King David. One cannot talk about anxious thoughts without addressing the many psalms. I mean, the many psalms that David was cry out to the Lord in distress. Listen to what Psalm 69, 29 says. They, they be right, and he said, and he said, but I am poor and sorrowful. Let thy salvation, O God, set me up on high. He described himself. As poor in, and in pain. Poor and sorrowful. He was in pain. And this is just one psalm. There are many psalms where David cried out to the Lord in distress because of anxiety. But what was his solution? I am poor. I am sorrowful. Let thy salvation was salvation, the thought of salvation, the reality of salvation, the truth of salvation, was the gospel of God to set him on high. What will control his thought? What will keep his thought, his mind in the right place during those times of distress, during those times of anxiety, was salvation. Salvation. Circumstances such as King Saul seeking to kill him and his many, many foes. David had the fear of the future, fear of life, many, many, many times. But his response was, all, was always salvation. To God and his salvation. Go to Daniel chapter 8. Look at Daniel. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 8, verse 27. Look at this, what it says here. Daniel chapter 8, verse 27. And I, Daniel, look, fainted and was sick certain days. Afterward, I rose up and did the king's business. And I was astonished at the vision but none understood it. When Daniel was, a vision was revealed for him, he was sick for many days. He said he was astonished to the point that he fainted. When confronted with terrifying vision, Daniel fainted for lack of sleep for days. In the previous chapter, chapter 7, verse 15, where am I? Chapter 7, verse 15. Listen to this. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head trouble me. Let's look at that verse. Look at what he said about himself. Daniel chapter 7, verse 15. He says he was grieved in his spirit. He was grieved in his spirit. In the midst of his body and the vision of his head troubled me. His head, his spirit, his soul, the thought of his mind. This was torture when he saw what the future held. Because that was what was causing him such anxiety. He could see what the future would bring. Wow. 
And when he saw it, he was terrified. He was terrified what's going to happen to the rulers and the powers. He was terrified to think what was going to happen in the future. He disturbed him. He, he disturbed him. And he was unable to move for several days. That's anxiety. Okay? That's being in pain. But his resource was the same. He went to God. He went to the Lord. He prayed. He trusted. Him. You see, all these men and women from the Bible, from the Bible, they were men. They were men just like you and I. They were flesh just like you and I. They suffer and they went through things just like you and I. And you see, these things are common to men. It's how we respond to them. It's how we, 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 we exercise our faith through them. It's how we go through it that's what made the difference. We either become dependent of, of, of medicine and pills and live secluded, slave in bondage with a subpar quality of life, or we're going to trust God, I mean, dive into his word, take hold of his promises, his power and strength, and keep moving forward in the faith that he is with us at all times. We got to choose what to do and what type of life we got to live. We, we, we want to, to live. But Jesus, the Lord God, through his word, is offering us a solution. It requires faith, though, and discipline. But it is a solution. And the reason we know that it is a solution, because even Jesus himself went through it, and even Jesus himself went to that solution. Go to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, verse 44. Here Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is the night before he's going to be crucified. And in Luke chapter 22, verse 44, we read the, fo the following. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. His sweat was like great, it says there, great drops, not just any drops, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus experienced such, dis such distress and apprehension that his sweat turned into droplets of blood. Some doctors will attribute this phenomenon to what is known as hematidrosis. Doctors have linked this to a fight to a flight response. It seems to be caused by extreme distress, anxiety, or fear. For Jesus, those drops of blood, he would have had so much apprehension that so much distress that the blood vessels in his head will burst from the pressure and leak, literally, droplets of blood. The pain, the anxiety, the distress, the agony that he was suffering at that moment was such that his vascular, the blood vessels in his head burst. And that's the reason they mix with the sweat and it look was drops of blood coming down of his head. I do believe, I do believe that no one, no one ever suffer such type of agony. I do believe that you and I have never 
been even close to the type of agony that Jesus went through the night before his crucifixion. Because you see, he was also man. He was a man. He understand what we go through. He understand what you go through. He understand your thought. He understand your fear. He understand your anxiety. And that's the reason he tell us to respond the way he will respond, the way he want us to respond, the way that is the solution. The, what Jesus was doing that night under such agony, what was he doing? He wasn't going to the liquor store. He wasn't going to the drug dealer. He wasn't going to a pharmacy. He wasn't going to a, no. He went, he separated himself to pray. He separated himself to pray. And you know, this might seem, from some of you, this might seem so simple. Oh, that's so simple. Well, I'm not talking, I'm not saying that it's simple. I'm just saying that it's part of the solution. And remember, this is not just a one minute scratch your eyebrow type of prayer. This was serious work of prayer. The serious business of prayer. The serious time of prayer. He was praying that night for at least three hours until they came to get him. At least three hours. He was so late, remember, that even the disciples fell asleep. The disciples fell asleep. They could not be an hour in prayer with him. They, were, they, they fell asleep. So it's business, serious thing of prayer. Agony, anxiety, distress is part of life. But as a believer, that's not the life I ought to live. That's not the life God wants me to live. As a believer, he want me to live abundant of life. That's why he died on the cross. That's why he gave his blood. That's why he rose again on the third day so I could have life. So even though I have to go through agony like he did, even though I have to go through deep waters or through the fire and have these thoughts and this distress in life like David did, like Daniel did, and others, I can still, I can still live an abundance of life and respond and attack and conquer that battle and conquer that challenge and conquer that struggle when I apply myself to the weapons, to the ammunition that he have given me in his word. So I got a choice to do. I either gonna continue to live the way I am and go through the things I go through, or I'm gonna be serious about God's word, and I'm gonna be serious about a serious solution. I either gonna live my 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 life subject to pills, or I'm going to submit myself to God's will out in his power through his word obtain victory maybe start with small victories small victories until the battle is over the thing is I should never give up the thing is I should never surrender the thing is I should never, never allow myself to accept to live with anxiety. When I know Jesus, when I have Jesus, I should never allow myself to accept that anxiety got to be or should be a part of my life. A part of my everyday life. And succumb to the manifestation, the negative manifestation of anxiety in my life, in my, in, my, in my relationship, and in everything else that I do. I should never allow myself, if I'm a believer, to believe or to live like that. Why? Because of God, 
because of the Lord Jesus and his promises in his word. For this is serious and this require attention. For this is serious and this require discipline. For this is serious and this require commitment. Commitment. Commitment and true, true devotion. There are no quick fixes. Not if we want a real solution. The world gives quick fixes. God, the Lord, the Bible will give you a solution that will be good for, for, for you now and forevermore. It's our choice. Meditate in these verses, meditate in these things while we go and we listen to another song and then I'll be back for a final word. brothers next week we're going to have the third and final session of conquering anxiety we're going to give you 20 steps i believe there are 20 steps on what to do in conquering anxiety some practical practical things that you can do while conquering anxiety um a lot of good a lot of good ideas and practical ideas and I wish and I pray that will be idea that can help, that can help us, that will help you in this battle. Hope you're well, hope you keep um, healthy and continue to trust the Lord and be grateful and thankful for all that is done because God is good all the time, all the time.
God is good. God willing, we'll see you Sunday. Have a wonderful rest of the week. God bless.